ברוכים הבאים לעוד מפגש של ג'אווה סקריפטי ישראל. כן, יפה. בדיוק. כל הכבוד לכם שהצלחתם למצוא את המקום, זה לא היה טריוויאלי. אני בהתחלה הלכתי לגג, ואז חזרתי למטה. כמה תודות, ככה שנתחיל. אז קודם כל, תודה רבה לוויקס אינג'ינירינג, שגם מארחים אותנו ונותנים לנו את הספונסרשיפ, ובזכותם נוכל לראות אחרי זה את הוידאו של ההרצאות. תודה רבה לסרגי, לדורון ולדין, שהולכים להרצות פה היום. כן? זה, אני לא יודע כמה אתם יודעים, אבל זה מה זה קשה להכין את ההרצאות האלה ולבזבז איזה יומיים ולהכין את הסליינים וזה, אז מגיע להם כל הכבוד. Uh, מה המטרה של הקבוצה למי שפעם ראשונה? המטרה שלנו זה לחלוק ידע בצורה כיפית. זהו, אין יותר uh, מטרות. אולי קצת להתפרס וזה, אם uh, uh, נתקדם, להתפרס כאילו בארץ וכדומה. זה קצת מספרים על הקבוצה. גדלנו מהפעם שעברה, הרבה בזכות uh, האנשים שעוזרים, גם במיטאפ, גם בפייסבוק, עוזרים לענות על שאלות וכדומה, אז תמשיכו, תודה רבה, זה ממש uh, מגניב. Uh, וחלק מהאנשים האלה, אני רוצה להגיד, uh, ככה לציין אותם uh, לשבח, uh, אנשים שעוזרים בפייסבוק ושואלים שאלות וככה פעילים וכדומה. אז קודם כל, אחד המרצים שלנו היום, דורון, אה, כן, הוא פה, עונה הרבה על ש... שאלות, שואל שאלות, אה, מתעניין. חן ריו, אני לא יודע אם הוא פה, הוא לא פה, נכון? אבל הוא יראה את זה אחרי זה בווידאו, <laughs> כן? אז אה, נשנה את זה, סתם. אה, אז תודה רבה לך, you're awesome. וולאד אה, בלין, הוא במקרה פה? לא. אז אה, גם, תודה רבה לך, היי אימא. אה, אז כן, כפיים לחבר'ה האלה. תודה רבה, וסתם שאוט אאוט לתום, שנמצא איפה תום? תום אלון, חזר מתאילנד, גם חבר פעיל מאוד בקהילה, אז חזר סוף סוף לארץ, תנק יו גייז. אוקיי, מי שרוצה לבוא ולהרצות, יש לנו ליינאפ, אנחנו רוצים לעשות את המפגשים האלה פעם בחודש, או פעם אפילו בשלושה שבועות וכאלה, בשביל זה אנחנו צריכים עוד מרצים, עוד, כאילו, יש לנו הרבה רעיונות להרצאות, אנחנו צריכים אנשים שימלאו את הרעיונות האלה, אז... תירשמו בלינק הזה ותבואו להרצות, גם אם זו פעם ראשונה ואתם מפחדים וזה, אל תדאגו, אנחנו פה, אנחנו עוזרים לכם והכל בסדר. אבל חשוב שככה נוכל להגביר את התדירות. אם בא לכם לתת פידבק, אז בלי, כן, יש לנו פידבק במיטאפ, בפייסבוק, בצוויצר עם ההשטג הזה, אבל כן, במילים שלכם, כן, לא זה. ו... כמו שאתם יודעים, לעשות את האירועים האלה זה הרבה הרבה עבודה, אז אם החברה שלכם, שאתם עובדים בה, רוצה לממן את אחד האירועים, או לארח, או וואטאבר, אוקיי? אז בעצם זה הלינק שהם צריכים למלא פה את הטופס, הם רואים מה הם מקבלים, מה הם נותנים, או לשלוח לי אימייל. מי שנותן לנו את האפשרות לראות את זה אחרי זה בווידאו, חבר טוב, ובעצם וויקס בכלל, הם מאמנים הרבה מהאירועים שלנו וגורמים להרבה דברים כאלה לקרות. אז עוד פעם כפיים, וכפיים ליואב אברהם, מי שיבוא לדבר איתנו. אז אני יואב בוויקס, תלוי איך סופרים, בין תשע לחמש שנים. אני אף פעם לא יודע. Uh, בכל מקרה, מתעסק בהרבה מאוד, בהרבה מאוד דברים, uh, אבל בין היתר, אחד הדברים המעניינים שאנחנו עושים בוויקס, זה הרבה מאוד עבודה עם ג'אווה סקריפט. Uh, אנחנו עכשיו סיימנו למעשה לשכתב את וויקס uh, בפעם השלישית uh, בג'אווה סקריפט. הפעם הראשונה היה פלאש, פעם שנייה ג'אווה סקריפט קאסטום שאנחנו כתבנו. ב-2010 עוד לא היה פרמורקים מגניבים כמו ריאקט ואנגולר. Uh, היה פרוטוטייפ, שזה התחלנו, ועכשיו סיימנו לשכתב את וויקס מחדש עם ריאקט. Uh, עשינו הרבה מאוד עבודה, הרבה מאוד ידע שנוצר אצלנו והרבה מזה שאנחנו משתפים עם הקהילה. הרבה מאוד מהידע שנצבר זה סביב נושא של טסטינג ואיך עושים פיתוח יעיל בקבוצה גדולה. אחד הדברים שמאוד חסר בעיקר בתחום הג'אווה סקריפט בארץ, איך, מנהל, איך קבוצה של 40 מפתחי פרונטד עובדת ביחד, או איך עוד קבוצה של 40 מפתחי פרונטד עובדת ומתממשקת איתם. זה אתגר די גדול בפני עצמו. חוץ מזה אנחנו מפתחים הרבה מאוד דברים אחרים נחמדים ומגניבים ומנסים אה, למשוך את הגבולות של מה שאפשר לעשות בעולם הפרונטנד קדימה. אה, יש לנו בשבוע הבא אירוע שאנחנו מתחילים קצת להראות פריוויו מהדברים שאנחנו עובדים עליהם. 
יכולות של מפתחים יותר לז... להתעסק עם אתרי וויקס. מפורסם בתוך המיטאפ, אז מי שרוצה להצטרף מוזמן. ומתוך זה גם כן הרבה מאוד דברים שלמדנו על בעצם כמה ה-workflow שאנחנו עושים היום, ה-state of the art workflow שאנחנו עובדים איתו היום בג'אווה סקריפט, כמה הוא מיושן ולא הגיוני. סרגי הולך לדבר רק על אלמנט אחד מתוך זה, אבל אנחנו מבטיחים בעתיד לשפר, לשתף בעוד הרבה מהאלמנטים האחרים. חלק מהם אפשר לראות באירוע שלנו בשבוע הבא, חלק מתחיל קצת לזלוג מכל מיני כיוונים, אבל בסופו של יום זה יצא החוצה כאופן סורס. אז תהנו מהאירוע היום, ושיהיה בכיף. תודה, תודה רבה. So one small disclaimer, it is not talk about Grunt or Gulp or any other building tool that you're expecting. We're going to talk about how we can write features uh, in a very fast manner and push them into production. <coughs> and uh, let's start. Let's start with a very simple question, like, what do we want? I made a very small you know, suggestion, what do we want as engineers, not what you want in, in your life. Besides that, we want fame, money, and power. Uh, we also want to build very good products and successful products. And for many of us, that means many different things, actually. Uh, for example, if I'm a UX guy, I want to build the most intuitive tool, for example, or I want to have a scalable architecture, or I want to make a very great performance on my, uh, on my product. But these are not the things that we're going to talk about today. What we're going to focus today is how we can ship features fast and how we can write a good quality code. Why I'm talking at all? Because that's the way we're working at Wix. And I'm a developer advocate at uh, Twix and team of my account. Uh, I also maintain of GS Must Watch. It's, a, I think, very good quality list of videos uh, related to JavaScript. So if you find yourself bored and you finished watching uh, videos from JavaScript Israel, you can go to this list and choose, a, choose any video that you like. Uh, I'm also happen to be the co-organizer of YGLF conference. You got a lot of front-end conference that we did this June. Who was there? Just two people. Three people. Four. Okay. Well, I really hope next year we'll have more, more participants. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with those two points. You know, when if you take a look uh, in the slide share, for example, all the different talks about continuous delivery, you will mostly see presentation that describes tools. Like, okay, we're using uh, CI, like Team CD, uh, or Jenkins, or, or whatever. And most of them are talking all the time about tools, but you know, tools are different all the time. It depends on the stack, depends on the company, on the history. I believe it doesn't start there. I believe that in order to push code as, uh, as many times as possible, it starts with people. It starts with values that you set to your people, to your developers, and the culture that you have inside the company. Uh, and it starts with two main things. It's trust that you give, the, that you give to your developers that they can push code to production, release it, deploy it, and there are no specific people for that. Uh, and with that trust, we as developers, we get responsibility. So if there is a bug in, in my code in production in the night, I wake up and I go and I fix that bug. I don't ask some junior engineers who come and to fix some bugs in the code. That's my code. I, I'm responsible for that. We're responsible for also not just for writing that code, but also for testing that code. So our QA guys, they check overall uh, the behavior of the system, but checking, like writing and checking my code, it's my responsibility. So I write unit tests, E2E tests, and all the other uh, variation of tests. Whenever you set that values and you spread it to 
to people inside your company, you can start you know, developing engineering practices, like writing TDD, for example. Uh, how many people are writing JavaScript TDD? Three, yeah, <laughs> awesome. Uh, how, many people write, how many people writing tests? Yeah, at least more people, this is good. It's really good. So you start developing practices, how you want, what practices you need to have in order to deliver your code fast. TDD, surprisingly, is one of those practices. Uh, also, uh, writing code with feature toggles. Uh, so you write your code, you push it into production, but it's not ready yet. So how you can deliver it, how you can push it into production, and somebody else can release it. So your code is uh, defended by the feature toggle mechanism. And we do A-B uh, tests. We also want to know how people are using our, uh, our application. So we, uh, we send events to, to our BI system. <laughs> Why? She doesn't like the... She doesn't like BI. I, yeah, she doesn't want to know. Uh, and we also monitor our application, our code. So in, as soon as you <laughs> done with that, we'll go to the tools. And that's the place where we can talk about it. Uh, so instead of me explaining you the tools, I think that's the lecture that Shai wanted from the very beginning. So I will tell you, okay, we have an Angular stack and we're using Grunt and we're using Bower and NPM and uh, what else we're using? New Relic uh, and some uh, BI system. I did that talk. Trust me, guys, it's boring. Because, you know, your, if your stack is different, if you're using React or Web, uh, what, Webpack, Browserify, uh, Babel, or any other tools, my talk uh, won't gonna, is not going to help you much. So instead of that, I'm going to focus on the flow. So what's the flow that developers in our company, or maybe if you want to set a continuous delivery or somebody is already working in continuous delivery mode in your company that every developer goes through. And on that example, I'll show you what kind of tools we are using. So you can figure out what type of tools you will need to have and find it if you're working on React. So you take React and uh, what's the testing framework on React? What's the testing framework in React? No, nobody knows? There is a name there, no? There is. You can test it with Mocha, Char, and test it on React. Uh, basically, uh, Facebook advises that they use Jest, but it, it's... Uh, it sucks? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, you see, so you're working in React, I assume? Okay. So you will figure out what's your set of tools, but your flow will stay the same. It's uh, very similar even maybe to server-side guys. So let's start. Whenever we start writing code, we write it under feature toggles. Uh, should I explain what feature toggle is? Yes? Is it? Okay. So basically, a feature toggle is a if statement inside your code. If feature toggle is on, your code will be executed. If your feature toggle is off, your code won't be executed. Very simple. Uh, how it helps us to, uh, to deliver code fast to ship features. I can work on the code, close it under the feature toggle, and open it only on staging environment, or open it only for my user, or open it only for Wix employees. So that allows me to write code and push it into production, but it never, it never be, it's never going to be executed for, for the real users. So I push code into production. It's already there. It just doesn't work. Uh, the code execution flow doesn't go there. So we start with, divining, uh, with defining the feature. Uh, the way we do it on the client side, this is like one of the tools that you're going to need, is uh, we, define, we define a JSON. That is, uh, when we deploy the static artifact, uh, it's scanned by the Petri, which is our uh, feature toggle and A-B a -B test uh, system. It works all over the weeks. We have like about 500 experiments running uh, at the same time. 
it's an open source project. You can try to use it uh, at your companies. And I define the JSON, and I check inside my code if these specs dot cx dot uh, open sidebar when something is added true. So write that chunk of code. These feature toggle mechanisms will also going to help me if I want to do the refactor of my code. So I hide the refactoring uh, under the feature toggle. And as soon as I'm done, I'm going to open the feature toggle and remove the old code. Uh, so we start with that. And then, instead of writing code, we're going to write test first. So as I told you, we write client side in TDD manner. And you know, from the very beginning, when, when, when you're starting to do that, it looks kind of weird. And you're trying to all the time to fall back. And you're like, how the hell am I going to write UI with unit uh, with, uh, in TDD mode? I write my HTML, and, and you know, that's it. I go home. Well, not exactly. Uh, we're in, in my team, we, in general, in Wix, we have two stocks. We have Angular stock and React stock. So I work in Angular stock, so I'm going to talk mostly about that. And you know, Angular is very, has very rich ecosystem, and it's very comfortable to write uh, TDD with, uh, with Angular. So we start with uh, writing end-to-end -end tests. So end-to-end -end tests will, uh, will show me the happy flow how the user is going to interact with, uh, with my system. And for that, case, you know, for that case, we we use in Protractor, uh, which is a good tool, I guess, you can say. Uh, but I don't know. There are no better tools, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> so we struggled with that a lot, but finally we, we succeeded. And so we define our task, we define our page objects. There is a whole theory of how you should write your unit test. We write our page objects that will represent our HTML. And uh, you write your first E2E test, which is going to be a happy flow for a user. Uh, as soon as you have it, then you go and write code. You implement a very small element, you know, a very small feature. Then you go back to your to your test. That's why you have these, it's, you know, it's circle. You write test, you write code. Your test passes, you go back. You write test, your, co your test fails, you go write code. So this is a very basic TDD flow. And uh, so for writing tests, we're using Protractor for E2E. Uh, as, I told, as I said about writing code, we're using TypeScript, uh, really good. Uh, TypeScript, Angular, uh, yeah, Karma for unit tests, and and yeah, that's that's about it. We're getting the tools here, uh, and then we commit. We're using Git. Yes, questions. You said you write end-to-end -end tests and then you write code. Yes. Where is the like the unit test? Do you do? Like yes, we we do unit test, and it's you know it's inside that so you write e to e somebody's calling me. so you write e to e test it fails you know it keeps failing then you go to you write your code you write unit test write code unit test code then your e to e uh, it's like circles okay so, so you start with the e to e and then only unit yeah, test and you go until go the e to e passes yes uh, okay then we do commit uh, we are heavily using Git. With uh, we're trying to keep our uh, Git Git log very clean, and we did a special workshop uh, for employees that they won't be afraid to, with using uh, Git and Git Squash and interactive rebase and do merge. It's really good thing. I was afraid of using Git. I don't know for a very long time. Now it's. I can't say that I worship it, but it's really good. Uh, as soon as we did commit, our CI system sees that there is a, a change, and it starts running build. Uh, we have a really good grant file. Uh, that's regarding the tools. Uh, it does all the concatenation, all the other stuff that 
you're supposed to do in build. And it also runs our our end-to-end -end test that we have wrote. Uh, so when we develop locally, we run it on the on the Chrome. Uh, but when we run our build in CI, we run it against Source Labs. Source Labs is a huge computer farm where you can uh, buy machines and run your tests, run your end-to-end -end tests there, and you can run it, you can specify a different operation system that you want. So we run it on uh, Windows and Mac, uh, and you also can specify different uh, versions of browsers, uh, including Internet Explorer, Safari, for example, Safari 5 on Windows, something, you know, very weird uh, configuration if you want. Um, okay, and another thing here uh, regarding the tools, we are using NPM and Bower for our code reuse, so we have many different internal Bower components that are uh, different, different projects are dependent on them. And whenever, whenever we have a change in a certain Bower component, uh, that's not necessarily no, a deployable thing, a deployable artifact, our CI sees the change and triggers all the builds of the uh, artifacts that depend on that, uh, on that particular Bower component. Clear? Yes, OK. Uh, whenever we have build and uh, we know it's done, we can uh, make a release candidate and upload to the staging environment if we want and uh, ask QA, for example, uh, to check. So what I wanted to demonstrate you is, is our uh, internal tool uh, that was built by our CI team. For example, you know, when when you give trust to developers to release the code into production, it should be very easy. And with this tool, it's indeed very easy. So here we have the list of uh, items, for example, list of projects. And if I want to make a new, uh, a new version, here is the button, RC, uh, which means a new release candidate, and will trigger the new build, make a release candidate. If I want to uh, release it into production, it's also very easy. There is another button, which is called GA. GA stands for general availability. So I push that code into production, and that's it. From the developer's point, I'm done. And if you know something went wrong, we can always roll back. <laughs> if you have a framework change that you that you need to do, and it's not like a small feature that you can write a little E to E test or mm -hmm. something. For example, if you change from uh, your MVC to to React, then does well, it apply there too? What? This? Well, you are basically uh, your E to E. They, you know, they they should work. If you change your selectors and you you using Protractor and you know WebDriver uh, to make the change, moving from your MVC to to some other MVCs, your probably E to E will break as well, and you'll have to rewrite them again. So I can tell you the experience of uh, our editor team that made these very significant change and rewrote the whole uh, viewer, viewer infrastructure uh, from in-house in made MVC framework to React. So what they did, they uh, made screenshots with Apply tools. Uh, and they compared the screenshots. Uh, I think that's going to be a better solution. OK. so. As I showed you in the, in life cycle, as soon as, soon as we have a release candidate, we can uh, deploy a new version. And you know, the regular flow, when, when you write code, here is done. Well, for us, it's not. Uh, as soon as we deploy, we keep, con we continue to maintain our code and continue working. And the next step, we go to our Petri system. Uh, which has a UI of uh, different experiments that are running. We see the name of our experiment that we want to open, and we open it uh, gradually. What does it mean? It means that 
we open, when the feature is ready, we open it first to Wix employees. And we send email to, to our company like, guys, here's a new feature, please play with that, give us feedback. Uh, if we see that it's fine, we start opening it to users. So we open it to, for example, 50% of Canada new users. And we monitor it. We monitor it for a week to see that nothing breaks, we don't get many complaints. Then we open it to uh, other countries, new users, uh, Canada, Australia, for example, New Zealand. And then we open it to, to all the users. Uh, and after that, we need to monitor. We monitor our code, we monitor our applications. We're using uh, our BI system for that. So basically, in every application, on every, I wouldn't say, you know, on every click, on every input or something like that, but in very many places, we want to know what's, what's happening with user and all the steps uh, of the funnel of, of his flow. So we send events from, uh, from the server side, we send events from the client side uh, to our BI system in order to monitor how our user feels. For example, if we see the drop in, uh, in login and we see that people, uh, that they can't log in, so we don't get enough events from BI, we know for sure that there is a problem in login. And we might notice it before that our user starts complaining. This is on one hand. On the other hand, we want to monitor what, what's happening with our, uh, with our applications. And for that, New, New Relic, uh, who uses New Relic? Two people, okay. Uh, who, okay, so New Relic basically, it's a tool, monitoring tool. Uh, for your applications, for your server-side applications, for your also client-side applications. So uh, here you see the example of uh, server, its transaction, its uh, response time. I'm not going to go very much into it. I'll go more in New Relic Browser, which is a monitoring system for your, uh, for your static applications. And here you can see the average loading time uh, of your website, for example, and you have an updex. Updex is basically one of the indexes that measures a, a, satis a user satisfaction for you. So you define like, for example, uh, if the user see my site within three seconds, it's fine for me. Uh, and you, you define the maximum, uh, you know, the maximum satisfaction rate and then it calculates uh, two more parameters, and it give you, it's going to give you the graph. For example, with uh, my account, our satisfaction rate around 70, 78%. You can also trace JavaScript arrows. You can trace uh, different session traces and, and send additional events to there. Uh, so it's a very powerful tool. And based on the additional information that you are sending, you can build your own graphs. So here we have a, you know, a dashboard uh, where we're monitoring my account and we have an average loading time, custom loading time. So since we're a single page application and New Relic not always can recognize when the, the, uh, when the application has finished loading, so we send additional finished event uh, from our perspective when the application is done. So whenever we deploy something to production, that's the way where I go. So here on, on those two graphs here, for example, here, you see we have a spike. I don't know why. You can set also alerts on that. And so whenever we deploy something to production, I will see like uh, servers restarting and I monitor like for the hour probably that nothing went wrong, that there are no spikes in the graphs. Uh, okay, let's go back. This is the responsibility of every developer? Yes. This is not a responsibility now for people who are, there are no particular people, special, special people who are deploying code into production. I click one button, code goes to production, I see it, I have a separate monitor, I connect my laptop, I have my graphs all the time there. Uh, if something goes wrong, you know, 
I can see that. I think there was a story when somebody saw something in the, in the graph, something weird, went inside the code and improved the performance. You know, it, it very helps that you have those performance graphs in rooms of developers. OK. So whenever we are satisfied with the feature and we see that everything works fine, we go and clean the code. If, you, if we did refactoring, we, uh, we remove the old code. We go and close the feature. And basically, that's it. And then, you know, the loop continues. Here is a small, if you didn't notice, here is a small arrow. It's a loop. So I take another feature, and I have, and I start all over, the, yes, all over again. Uh, so regarding the tools, this is basically I tried, you know, to, to sum up uh, families of tools that, you, that you're going to need. Uh, testing, we're using Protractor, Karma, uh, Builds, Grand, Gulp, uh, Broccoli, uh, Deploy. So we're using Chef, our uh, system team. They build all the uh, infrastructure so every developer can uh, deploy that. Uh, Tools for experiments. I think now Google Analytics uh, has the support of A-B tests, so we can do it using uh, their system. Monitoring and analytics. Uh, and in conclusion, I would like to say that, you know, it might seem as a real long flow, and it might, you might think that it takes more time, but from our experience, even if it takes a little bit more time developing the feature, then, it, just let me finish. Uh, then it will take less time fixing bugs because you write in TDD and maintain the code because you're not afraid to change the code because you have very good test coverage. And that's it. Question. Am I good on time? I have if four I minutes. Have, yes. If I have a feature that depends on other features, how do I start uh, the flow? If you have a feature, that, what's the use case when you're going to have that? Um, you assume that it's. You assume that the feature is there. It's very difficult to you know to manage dependencies between the features. Uh, from my experience, we ne I, I personally never had that. So I assume that if I develop the feature and there is some part of the code that is there, uh, I assume that it's there. If my if my feature depends on another feature and, and another feature is turned off. So my code is not, is not going to work as well. Uh, did I answer the question? Um, not exactly, because. OK, so let's take it offline. OK. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to expand. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to expand, because um, maybe for a large group of developers, when you have a feature that is, that is very, very large, mm -hmm. then you can you can say that everything is one feature and we can deploy it mm. single-handedly, but if, if for a small group of developers we have a very large feature, then we need to break it apart. Mm -hmm. And then some of the features are dependent one on, one on the other. Yeah, I see. So we need to deploy them together, but they are separate features, yes. but they are dependent. So that, yeah. I assume, the question is. Yes. It's complicated. Yeah, <laughs> okay. That's the answer. אוקיי, תודה רבה.